Welcome friends, in this one let's take a look at anti-differentiating 1 over the square root of x squared minus 4 using a trig substitution. So because we have something that looks like x squared minus 4 under the root symbol that tells us that we can use the following. We can set x equal to 2 secant of u. Where in this context, remember the following, okay? u is an angle. Some people use theta. I'm not using that because it's easier to type u than theta. And then, based on that, once you differentiate, you can say that dx would be equal to 2 secant of u, and then here, tan of u, and then du, this way. Now what we need to do is we need to recreate the expression in the bottom of the integrand as follows. We're going to type square root of replacing x with 2 secant, secant of u for now, this way. And then here, this whole thing is squared, and then minus 4. Now we just have to simplify this expression. So it's going to be here. 4 secant squared of u, and then minus 4, and now here it's going to be following 4, and then secant squared of u minus 1, and now this part that says secant squared of u, that can be replaced just directly with tangent squared, it's equivalent to it, so it's going to be the square root here of tangent, so 4 tangent squared of u, we're going to take the square root, so it's going to be basically 2 tangent of u, this way. Once you have that in place, you can recreate the whole integral as follows. Copy it down, and the bottom expression there, in blue highlighted, can be replaced directly with just 2 tangent of u, and the dx part can be replaced from up there with 2 secant of u, and then tangent of u, and then du, this way. Continuing here, I observed that the tangent parts and the twos can be canceled. So specifically, this can be canceled, this can be canceled, the tangent part can be canceled, and this tangent, tangent part can be canceled also. So this is now just going to leave the following integral, essentially, which is actually very nice, just secant of u du. And anti-differentiating that will give us ln of the absolute value of the following, secant of u plus, and then tangent of u, and then plus c. This antiderivative that you see here is often developed in other contexts. Here we're just going to take it at face value that this is the correct antiderivative. Now the last part that remains is to replace secant of u and tangent with the of u. So what we need to do is make a triangle over here. Let's make a triangle that looks like the following. And then here remember that u is an angle. So u, u goes in this position. And then remember this basic bit, right? If x is equal to 2 secant of u, then this tells you the following, that x like this. x over 2 is equal to secant of u, which means when you flip everything, what you get is an equivalent statement that says that 2 over x is equal to 1 over secant, in other words, the cosine function this way, okay? It's just cosine of u. Because cosine is 2 over x, it's got to be that the horizontal leg is 2, the hypotenuse is x, which means by the Pythagorean theorem that the vertical side would be the square root of x squared minus 4. Going back over here to the integral, continuing, I'm going to now write ln of the absolute value. Secant of u, we already know, that's equal to x over 2, easy enough. Plus, but the tangent of u is the square root of x squared minus 4 divided by 2. So it's going to be here for that reason, x squared minus 4 divided by 2, and then you add c at the end. The answer in this position right here, to be clear. If it's been helpful, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.